and hello everyone. Uh, my name is Wen Hao. Uh, it's my pleasure to uh, present our work, Object Flow Integrity over here. Uh, this work is done with my colleague Xiao Yang and our advisor, Dr. Hamlet. Uh, we are from the University of Texas uh, at Dallas. The control flow hijacking attacks have been bothering us for several decades. Mm -hmm. The attacker first exploited uh, data flow vulnerabilities to corrupt data pointers. Uh, in the end, the attacker can uh, redirect control to attacker chosen program subroutines. <clears throat> mm. uh, please, uh, I, apologize, I apologize here to show you the image of pizza. Uh, that might remind you the time for lunch. Uh, but uh, to illustrate the nature of the problem, uh, you can imagine uh, programs are those pizza. And the various basic blocks in the program are pizza slices. And the, origin, the original developers intended these slices to be consumed in uh, some particular order. But in this, in this slice, I uh, put, put it in uh, clockwise order, but it could be in any direction. And so after the attacker hijacked control of the program, uh, the, the attacker can uh, can cause the pieces to be consumed in any order. Uh, for example, uh, uh, in our lab, my colleague Xiaoyang is a pepperoni uh, lover. Uh, if he is the, the attacker, he can consume the uh, pepperoni slices repeatedly. Uh, so to counter the the attack, uh, control flow integrity is a uh, promising solution. Uh, in in the the con the control flow integrity will instrument control flow transfer instructions with uh, extra guard code to validate each impending control flow target at runtime, and to confine control flow to a wide list of permissible edges, so like like. Uh, like it is shown in the uh, picture, uh, after the control flow integrity enforcement, all the slices will be contained uh, in each each boxes. There have been uh, all of these impressive works that solve various problems in implementing control flow integrity guards, and some of them are for compile time solutions and other works, other work, others work on uh, binary directory. But it turns out that there are large classes of consume, consume software for which none of, none of these approaches are directly applicable. And one of the biggest categories out there is that a lot of software targets proprietary operating systems. And uh, all these prior approaches require that all modules in this system be transformed with uh, CFI protections. That's very difficult to do that to do when some of the components are uh, digitally signed, immutable operating system components owned by some uh, corporation. And you can you can see uh, in the chart. Uh, uh, a large market share of consumer consumer desktop applications fall into that category, namely uh, Windows and uh, Mac OS. So let me explain you more detail uh, what the problem is, why these prior approaches uh, just don't work. The problem that the problem is that these uh, proprietary operating systems have large trusted components that have huge object-oriented interfaces. 
and these components are immutable. They are not easy to change because they might be digitally signed or dynamically loaded from a cloud. Uh, they are constantly being updated through auto updates. So it's just not feasible to uh, modify them directly at the binary level. Uh, there have been various proposed solutions to this problem in prior works. Uh, one category uh, is called uh, V-table integrity that involves modifying the trusted module to protect the objects that's been, that, have, that are being exchanged. But if you cannot change the trusted module, then those defenses don't easily apply. Another approach taken by Forward Edge CFI is to uh, validate the, the object on the untrusted side at the point it's been exchanged with the trusted module. But that doesn't work if the trusted module retains a reference to that object after it returns. Because in that case, the untrusted module can then corrupt the object without exchanging it. Uh, leaving the trusted module in position of a corrupted object. Uh, and the same problem occurs with uh, multi-threaded software. A third potential solution uh, proposed by uh, Microsoft Control Flow Guard uh, MCFG is the idea that maybe we should, maybe we should just uh, uh, apply the same CFI defense into all modules that are released by all software vendors. But there is a obviously a uh, scalability issue over there. It's very difficult to convince all vendors to comply with the same CFI protection system. And no, and, and no one CFI system is perfect for everything. For, exam for example, uh, MCFG does not protect does not protect against uh, return-oriented programming attacks. And many other CFI protec protection systems do. So we'd like to have a more cross-compatible solution. And to demonstrate the deficiencies of, of these prior works, in our paper, we implement something we call a confused deputy assist counterfeit object-oriented programming attack. It successfully hijacked Windows software applications, even with MCFG enabled, even with uh, VTable protection enabled, and even with uh, valid validation of objects at the points of ex exchange. Uh, so our system, uh, object flow integrity, uh, is a systematic methodology for uh, imbuing CFI with first-class support for immutable trusted module with object-oriented API. Uh, we construct a prototype, prototype implementation, and we also invent a novel approach to automatically synthesize the implementation. And uh, our system have, has uh, low performance overhead under 2%. Uh, before I show you the implementation details of how we accomplish this, I want to show you the results we obtained. Let me show you the performance that we got. Uh, we used our system to protect a set of proprietary applications for which none of the prior works as far as we know, uh, can be successfully applied because they, they all require changing all some system modules in order to provide uh, complete protection. And uh, for each of these applications, we obtain very low runtime performance overhead under 2%. The only exception is our Synthetic exploit, which uh, which has high overhead because it's actually an attack, so it 
so it gets uh, stopped. Uh, we also performed a, a thorough security evaluation in which uh, we launched uh, counterfeit object-oriented programming attacks and uh, uh, code group attacks against these applications. And all of, all of the attacks were blocked. And uh, we achieved this without performing modification to the proprietary system modules on these operating systems. So uh, how do we uh, achieve that? Let me explain the, de the design and the, the implementation. Uh, the solution that we adopted centers on the, on the idea of object, object proxy. So instead of attempting to uh, protect an object that is exchanged between these two modules, we actually substitute the exchanged object with a different object, a proxy object. Uh, that way, these two modules actually are not directly sh sharing objects anymore. So, re so remove the attacker's opportunity to corrupt an object that's being held by a trusted module. And in our system, there are actually two kinds of proxy objects. One is, uh, one is substituted for an object that when it passes from untrusted, untrusted to trusted, uh, that's called the flaw processing object. And, it, and then another that's protected in the opposite direction, that's called the ceiling proxy object. And uh, the proxying functions are inverse, so when an uh, when the uh, uh, object flows uh, forward and back, the the creator of the of the object gets its uh, original original object back, and it's unaware what it's unaware that any proxying has taken place. So in the high level, uh, the proxying Proxying object is actually an inline reference monitor. Uh, it uh, contains uh, two properties, the security and the compatibility. In this talk, I'm going to focus on the security of the system. To explain what security means in this context, we recognize, we recognize that an OFI security policy is actually a type-based contract between trusted and untrusted modules. This is a contract that governs the proper use of code pointers between these two communi community modules. Uh, to capture that, we define a type system that can encode these contracts. I want to go through the details of the type system here for lack of time, but uh, you can read the paper to get those details. The basis for our system is this transformation, transformation uh, algorithm that takes the, this input API type signatures for these interfaces, converts them into, into these uh, type-based contracts, and then from the contracts, we automatically synthesize the code that uh, enforces the contract. So at the runtime, when an untrusted module attempts to pass an object to untrusted module, the control is rerouted through a, a series of uh, trampolines and dispatchers so that the object always flows to a, a mediator that enforces the contract before passing proxy object to the trusted module. And a similar process occurs in the, in the reverse direction. 
since the trusted module only receives proxy objects, the proxy objects module are actually mediator implementations. So when it tries to call them, it flows through a, a series of truths and uh, bouncer dispatchers to get to the contract enforcement code. And then the proxy object is, is passed to the, to the untrusted module. And uh, that all those enforcement implementation are automatically uh, synthesized. So uh, the header file and uh, the exploit list will first compiled into symbol file. Then we com convert the symbol file to templates. And uh, in the sec second pass of the compilation, uh, the templates will be compiled into mediator source, and in the in the uh, in the third pass, uh, we can get the mediator libraries from the mediator source. Uh, here's here's the overall architecture and uh, how it works. At this point, I'd like to show a demo of the system actually working on a, a proprietary operating system but there isn't uh, time for a time for a separate demo so i made i made the entire presentation on a demo uh, so as you see uh, this presentation is running on uh, firefox that has been automatically transformed at the binary level without source code to have OFI enforced in it. And uh, in order to uh, achieve that, we have, we have uh, not only to uh, instrument the uh, Firefox uh, exe file, we also have to instrument all the uh, ELL files. So. One thing we have to uh, point out is that uh, in order to guarantee the security of the uh, um, of the JS code, we need a CFI supporting JET compiler, such as uh, RockJet. And uh, this demo shows that our approach scales to large pieces of software that are very complex and uh, doesn't require source code. To summarize my talk, uh, our system first to extend CFI to, to significant class of cons consumer software. Uh, we, we construct a prototype implementation of uh, OFI for Microsoft COM. And uh, our system is uh, source agnostic, automatic, synthesized, and uh, low overhead. And uh, I'm ready to answer your questions. And we store the uh, proxy object uh, on the uh, read-only memory. So, and also we have a hash table to uh, store them. So the attacker, uh, even he can uh, know the location of the proxy object. Uh, the when the proxy object is the method of the proxy object is called, it is still needed to go to the mediator. Then the mediator can uh, verify 
whether the uh, next jump target is obeyed to our security policy. And if the Because it is the proxy objects that are, that are given to the trusted module. So when the trusted module have to call the method of the object, it will call the uh, the method of the proxy object. So even the attacker can uh, corrupt the original object. The control flow when the control flow goes from the trusted module to untrusted module, the uh, the call to the proxy object will go to our proxy object uh, implementation. Okay, content from Penn State. Is it now open? Anyway, I just have one more question. So maybe I can get a question from the audience. Yeah. So uh, for example, copies of the original object, if, if there are copies, do you have multi-threading issues? Because if one module... Uh, yes, we have the... Uh, not, we don't have the multi-thread issue, but we have the solution for the multi-threaded uh, uh, schedule. But but uh, we we don't we don't just uh, copy the original project. We just uh, uh, create a, a a common uh, V table for our proxy object, and uh, through the proxy object, we we can we have a hash table to. Uh, store the original object. So through the proxy object, we can get the original object. So we don't copy the original object. No, we don't copy the original object. 